Hi, my name is Lazara um, and I came to this program uh, with the intention to explore um, non-Western uh, discourses related to sustainable development to unfold um, the cultural dimensions of sustainability um, and learn uh, about what India has to offer uh, in these terms and in the marginalized communities that we visited. Um, and I'll start with uh, maybe the things that I've learned the most throughout this experience um, or were the most striking for me. Um, and these were, one, the, the concept of happiness and contentment. Um, I've never really thought about it besides just feeling it, right? Um, and thinking about it um, in more conceptual terms and the Buddhist and Upanishadic framings that we, that we came across here um, were incredibly enlightening, especially uh, in terms of this idea of happiness not as something that comes from outside, not that something that will come in addition to other things, but rather it is um, the removal of suffering, it's the decluttering of your mind, um, the decluttering of your life and something that uh, really comes from within. Um, and there was a really beautiful um, analogy or, or an analogy that really stuck with me when we went to the um, um, Brahma Kumaris of, uh, of a turtle that um, like a turtle you can go inside um, uh, your own shell and in, what they were saying is that when you go inside and you're looking for internal into yourself you work with your um, with your sense of self um, that God will protect you or that the universe will protect you. Um, and I really found this metaphor really stuck with me um, that you know happiness has so often been something that I look for out there or that is very contingent on the outside but and that being like a hermit or something is not necessarily good but that is it is also um, important for one to to look inside um, and find it within and find the reasons for why it's not coming within. Um, and there was a thread between all the places that we went that um, really the, the essence of the self or the soul or the universe is uh, contentment and that we just have to remove the baggage that we come with and come across within life, which I thought was, was a very positive view and a very um, beautiful view. Um, as well, what, uh, what I learned were, or what really struck me is what the, what really struck me were stories that really clearly showed the entanglements of, of nature and culture. Um, we spoke with some scholars in the, um, I think the Varanasi Hindu Institute. Um, he told a story um, that ultimately, I won't share it now, but ultimately led to the idea that if we, when we destroy nature, we also destroy ourselves. Um, and I think, especially in terms of, of um, sustainability and community, communal well-being, um, this is such an important reminder. Um, as well, what was so striking was everywhere we went, um, so many people, without us even really asking, um, would just say how much uh, the Ganges River gives them peace. And different people of different backgrounds, of different ages, uh, would say that what they do to, in times of, of stress or worry, they sit by, the, uh, by Ganga, they watch the river flow, they watch her flow, um, and, it, and it eases them. Uh, and just this connection that so many people across India that we've met have uh, was truly, felt truly profound. Um, and as well, what I, what I learned, which was uh, really interesting and, and inspiring, um, and just felt so um, relevant, was the, the origins of Buddhism and of, of Buddha's um, intentions were quite democratic. Uh, were very democratic, in fact, and that was one of the 
maybe f saying founding principles isn't the right way, but uh, was one of the founding principles and and the importance of, of community um, and accessibility of happiness and peace and, and reaching satisfaction and contentment um, can be done by anyone. Um, and I think especially for today, this is an incredibly relevant point that we, we must bring back um, to, our, to our personal lives, to our communities, um, and as well to our professional uh, settings. Um, and now in terms of um, professional growth or, or relevancy or something that I really want to bring back to my studies um, is this idea of infinite compassion um, and how it can be operationalized or explored um, as an element or as a pathway towards building more sustainable and um, equitable futures and just futures. Uh, and I've found in my work and in the dominant discourses within sustainability that um, the cultural sides, the emotional dimensions, the, for lack of a better word, the spiritual dimensions of what it means to build a more sustainable and, and happy and equal society um, are unexplored. And I think this is what I will um, bring back to my, to my work and to my colleagues. And um, I've already spoken to, to some and I'll have, um, I'll have a chance to um, present about my, my work, uh, our work here. Um, and I'm working currently uh, on a syllabus that could integrate these kinds of, these kinds of ideas and especially have students explore maybe through through as well the artistic um, traditions here in India. How can we cultivate compassion and how can we um, purposefully channel these kinds of practices and ways of thinking and ways of being um, for building a better future. Um, and to end Everything on a more personal note, uh, what I found was so beautiful. Just as much as we saw the omnipresence or importance of Ganga, um, we also saw uh, everyone spoke about art or the arts in one way or another. At certain point, somebody said music is magic um, or, or that poetry is what uh, keeps humanity together. And for me, this was so um, touching, especially because I do a lot of art myself as a hobby. And something that stuck with me for a long time that I read ages ago, I think I was uh, still in school, was this idea um, in the West. Of course, it's not dominant in the West, but it is does exist in the West that, that uh, artistic practice or art is a kind of selfish activity. Um, and that kind of stuck with me. Um, but here it's exactly the opposite. It's what brings people together. It's the way you show and practice your devotion um, to whatever faith you have. Um, and it's a kind of service. It's a selflessness in a way. Um, and, and it reconfirmed my belief that art is the very threads that um, I think keep keep the world together and personally gives me hope that we could improve the, um, the world for, for ourselves now and for our communities and for the future. Thanks.